y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. I told y'all this was coming, and I, and I, w- I wasn't expecting it to be so fast, but it's here. It says, get ready to fly without a passport or boarding pass as one ID advances. This story came out on October 27th, 2023. So it says the days of fumbling for passports and boarding passes when we fly may soon be behind us. Um, If you've been flying out of Fort Lauderdale International Airport, they already had this. They had this for a couple of years um, where you just show your ID and it lets you go through the gate. It knows if you had a flight. And it could tell you what gate you're going through and everything. So you didn't even have to have your electronic boarding pass. You could use it, but most times they want your ID. So they're switching, getting ready to switch to where this digital ID or your your ID has that little strip in the back of it. So it has digital information, uh, biometric information, so that you can get on the airplane. So it says recent developments in digital identity technology have paved the way for a seamless and secure travel experience from start to finish. So they have been priming and prepping us for so long for this. It's it's almost humiliating now to see how we just went along with this. And now here we are. I pray everything that they try to fail. I hope everything they do fail till they do right by us. Children of the corn. The International Airport Air Transport Association has successfully tested a fully integrated digital identity travel experience as part of one ID initiative. Um, so it says while there is still a need to weave together technology and policy, it marks the start of a passport and boarding pass free future. IATA one ID trials. So it says IATA, and I just said IATA, recently conducted trials with industry partners to create a fully integrated digital ID, one ID for everything, travel experience. Partners in the one ID initiative include Accenture, Amadeus, AWS, British Airways, Branch Space, ID Now, Turkish Airlines, Trip.com, oh, Sikpa, and Verchaska. The first full one ID trial involved a journey on British Airways from London Heathrow to Rome, Fiumicino. Or Fiumicino. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry for butchering that. <laughs> the successful contactless trip highlighted the potential passenger benefits of digital identity and biometric technology. They're going to get them bio, the biometrics one way or another. Our vision for future travel is fully digital and secured with biometric identification. The technology exists to do this at a at each stage of a journey. Linking these steps together has proven challenging. Nick Kareen, IATA Senior Vice President for Operations, Safety, and Security. We show that it is possible. This will open up a world of possibilities for simpler journeys in the future. Airline customers favor contactless travel. I do not. I understand the ramifications. Airlines can offer passengers a contactless experience by capturing their digital passport information, biometric data, and other required details. Seat assignments and check-in can be simplified, reducing the need for traditional boarding passes. Biometric data allows travelers to enjoy a hands-free airport experience. Passengers can clear security lines, lounges, and aircraft with biometrics. Studies conducted by IATA and others show that customers are more interested in digital solutions and biometric identity verification, 
particularly during boarding and security checks. So see how they always tie this collecting your information to the ease of doing something that you love to do. That's fun, exciting, or you need for work. Or you just got, you know, you, you got to go someplace. So they tie these things to that type of stuff. So you'd be like, oh, ain't nothing wrong with it. Oh, it's okay. It's it's easy. I like it. Well, when, as soon as they cut your money off and or cut your phone off and you can't go into the store because you got a, 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 you know, bad symbol by your biometric symbol. So you, you're in the database and you can't you know, going to the store because your your biometric data got some flag by it. Or what if they misidentify you and you didn't do nothing, but you look like Sally Mae who robbed a bank in another town, in another 15-minute city, or did something that is going to be on the social credit score list of things that you can't do, maybe speaking out. Well, you might not be able to go into the store because everybody got a twin somewhere in this world. And so your biometric data is going to be used to uh, keep you from accessing things that the dominant society in this new global order don't want you to have as a means of punishment. What if you're going to get your weekly ration of meat that's already injected with the lollipop and you don't know because you don't care, but you think this is a good idea, this biometric collection for identity verification um, y'all got to wake up, see the big picture. IAT's passenger survey found rising confidence in biometric identification. In the last 12 months, 46% 40 of passengers used biometrics at the airport, up from 34% in 2022. Furthermore, 75% of passengers prefer using biometric data over traditional passports and boarding passes. Of those who've used biometric identification during the travels, 46% reported an 85% satisfaction rate, IATA reports. Now, what happens when the power go out and you, can't, you don't have no power? What happens when the backup generators don't work? What happens if you leave the country and go someplace on vacation with this digital stuff and their power goes out and you about to miss your flight or you can't go any place and you stuck because everything is digital and requires power and it requires a server um, and accuracy. What happens when AI decides it's going to go rogue and just mess up? Too many variables when all you got to do is have your little piece of paper pull it out, scan it. All you got to do is have your little passport. If you ain't, if you can't keep up with your passport, you shouldn't be traveling anyway. Um, or, or in the rare occasion where something is stolen. Um, you know, what, what happens? Your biometric data is going to, you know, save you somehow? Probably not because it's probably going to want something else. I don't know. Um, I just think this is a stupid idea. Of those who use biometric identification during their travels, 46% reported an 85% satisfaction rate. And they probably was all young people because they don't know no better. Although I do know some very ignorant older people who say stuff like, I'm not a criminal, so I have nothing to worry about. Everybody says that until they're going to wake up one day and learn they're in a digital prison. We're going to be in digital concentration camps in 15-minute cities eating fake meat and drinking soylent green. A separate survey by travel technology firm CIDA found passengers are most comfortable using biometric identity to board aircraft, clear security, and verify their identity. However, they were less comfortable using biometric ID for check-in, lounge access, and baggage drop, which is st stupid. It should, you shouldn't be comfortable with any of it. Effortless travel requirements check. Digital passports stored in a traveler's digital wallet. Remember, I told y'all about those digital wallets. I will attach a video um, at the end about the digital IDs that are coming. And how, like in Nigeria and a lot of places, the whole 
nation is is going digital they don't have paper money you can't use paper money you can't use your cell phone you can't have a bank account without a digital id and so i'm i'm saying this the digital id the, all this digitalization is not the mark of the beast yet but it is tied to this beast infrastructure and so that's what we have to understand how this is coming together and I don't know if we're going to be able to avoid it. You know, I've been through the airport. I've gone through customs. You have to check in digitally. They take your biometric information. So I know my stuff is already in the biometric database. I already knew it. Um, so in order to get back into the country and go home, I had to do it. What you going to do? Stay at the airport? Be an airport refugee? I don't think so. But they always have alternative plans for this system and they've been instituting these things for a long time we just weren't really aware of how they would be connected because we were asleep now we are awakened and now we can see it and because it's here so it says um passengers can easily confirm their travel document requirements by sharing their nationally their nationality data iata's thematic solution supports this process making it possible for travelers to prepare for their journey long before arriving at the airport alaska airlines alaska airlines is mobile verify program so it says alaska airline has recently streamlined passport verification with its mobile verify program their airline selected airside a product of onfido onfido to support the process it allows passengers to digitally confirm their passports on their smartphones before heading to the airport once at the airport passengers can use their digital verification to clear passport controls for international flights so there you go you know, I was telling y'all about how the cell phone going to be real important. You're going to have to have that mobile device in order to do everything. And they got everybody addicted to it. So now you're going to be forced to keep it in your hand because you're going to need it for everything. Sharu Jane, Senior Vice President of Innovation and Merchandising at Alaska, Alaska Airlines, said the goal was getting you through the lobby in five minutes or less. No, nobody care about that. I don't have to go fast. You tell us to get there in hours in advance. What you going through fast for? You still gonna have to wait. Okay, so it says global transformation and interoperability. So remember, I was telling y'all about interoperability. So anytime they talk about that, we need to pay attention because that means things are going to be connected globally. And they tell you right here, global transformation. A secure digital identity and biometric technology will enable a future without passports and boarding passes. Industry-wide cooperation and adherence to global standards are essential to achieve acceptance. IATA and the International Civil Aviation Organization are helping to define the standards required. Seamless travel also depend upon governments implementing policy that supports digital alternatives. For example, Governments enable digital border controls by using e-visas to check passengers before they arrive. According to NIATA survey, visa requirements in different countries discourage 36% of potential travelers. The visa application process prevents 49% of would-be travelers from taking a trip, and 66% of travelers would prefer to apply for a visa online. We ain't never had to have all this stuff before. You could just get on the airplane and go where you wanted to go. And now they want to know where you're going all the time, why you're going. You got to pay extra money for these things. Like travel is getting ready to be a pain in the butt. It's already a pain in the butt, but it's going to be to the point where you're not going to want to travel, either because of the invasion of privacy or just because they keep selling you, trying to pull you into this digitalization. Oh, it's easy. All you gotta do is apply online. And people just eat it up. Oh, yeah, it's online. The process is so much easier. You're in a digital concentration camp. 
Time consuming and complex visa requirements deter travelers and deprive uh, destination economies of valuable tourist revenues. Time and time, time and again, we have seen that when countries remove visa requirements, economies re prosper and rising visitor numbers, said Kareem. I'm sorry. Economies prosper from rising visitor numbers. Finland recently launched the world's first digital travel document pilot program at Helsinki Airport. By registering for DTC, passengers on Finnair flights to selected destinations could bypass border control queues while preserving security. For now, only Finnish citizens can use the DTC. However, interoperability is the goal of those working on seamless travel future. That's the goal for everything. Everything is going to be interoperable. You're not going to be able to go to another county. You won't be able to go to another country. You won't be able to go into a store from one store to the next without this system knowing where you are at all times. That is the goal. There's, that requires harmonized standards and policies between stakeholders and governments. So the citizens don't have nothing to do with nothing. Because stakeholders ain't you, and it's not me. Ensuring privacy is essential. We don't want to hear this. We already know. They're not going to keep you private. They cannot protect private privacy. Can't stop all this hacking. Manual processes will still be available for those who find biometric identity discomforting for now. But it is going to be mandatory because that's what they did in Nigeria and in Kenya. But we may see paper passports going the way of airline printed tickets over the next decade or so. So, I just wanna share the story with you. It is coming. The B system is here. Uh, they've been piloting all these things. They've been introducing this stuff for the last couple of years. We have participated in it unknowingly. We are in these databases and they are ready to control everything, every aspect of our lives is here. All right, y'all, this is Marley K. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you catch out my Beast Infrastructure Beast Infrastructure series that I did um, back in the summer and some of the other um, videos on the digital ID systems that are coming and the examples of um, countries that I have already tried to implement these things um, and how they roll them out and then i'll do a follow-up story i've done a follow-up story on a couple of these nations on how at the end the governments force you you know they offer it to you in the beginning to see how many voluntary takers they get but once they don't get the takers that they want then they um force these things on you and then once they force them on you you just done you just, you're just done can't do nothing so in any event just be ready um follow me on odyssey and rumble links are in the description follow me on social media links are also in the description if you'd like to support the channel links are in the description um keep prepping keep praying keep seeking the most high on how to navigate this system that is coming a lot of this stuff is already in place we don't have any control over it um but understand these things will be associated with the mark of the beast and you will have to make a choice eventually um, these things are things that we may have to um, use initially to survive um, unless you have figured out a way to live off the grid 
a lot of us have not and cannot afford to do that. We just don't know what's coming. But know that these systems are already in place. They are ready to institute them because they are ready to switch this system over to this last and final government, world government system. That's why everything got to be interoperable, digital, and all these different companies that are coming up with these different um, uh, digital ID methods are all going to be working together. So it's not like you know, don't think you're going to be using something different. All the data going to be stored with the same people. So we got to pray that we figure out how to get out of this because it's getting tight and I don't see how we're going to escape. All right, y'all. Keep prepping. Keep praying. Keep seeking the most high. Keep repenting daily for sins of commission and omission. Make sure you pray for the awakening. Pray that we are found worthy to escape all that is coming on this earth and coming to Mystery Babylon. We are stuck here right now and we need a supernatural deliverance because I just I don't even understand why they need to control so much of our movement and so much of our access to resources. But they do. So. Um, just. Be aware of what's happening. This is a data point, but the controlling of movement is happening at a rapid pace. It's happening in Europe and it is happening here. Um, resist what you can while you still can. All right, this is Marley Kay. Love y'all and I am out.